today I have traveling all the way from Australia, Phil Miller, part of our XRF XRD team in Australia. Phil, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Ian. Um, it's a great opportunity to talk to you about XRF and XRD and mining. Uh, we've had a few questions in the past about mining, and um, I was wondering if you could tell us how XRF and XRD is being used in mining. Well, they, they get used throughout the process, uh, starting from exploration through processing, um, and then all the way out to looking at tailings or plant maintenance. Okay. Um, in exploration, you're using the XRF and the XRD to start to try and map out an area yep. to understand what its potential is. Okay. Um, and in some cases, it's the XRF just to get the elements, and it's the XRD to understand how valuable the, the, the formation is, because if the elements are in certain forms, um, they're very hard to process, and you'd like to know that ahead of time. Right. Um, when you start getting to processing, you know, I have to take the ore that I'm digging up concentrate it and then turn it into metal at some point. Okay. The mineralogy um, of it, first of all, the chemistry tells me how valuable it, how valuable it is. It tells me how much, um, how much to sell it for because it tells me the iron content. Okay. It tells me what my penalty elements are. Okay? There are certain things that in the resulting metals degrade the metals, such as phosphorus and iron ore. Okay. Um, and then if you go a little bit further, it start to figure out you know, how much of it is recoverable. The XRD tells you how to treat it. So how is XRD showing us that? So let's talk about copper ore. Okay. In copper ore, just knowing the copper number isn't enough. Um, you want to know, is it oxide or a sulfide? Okay. Um, because those are both processed completely differently. Uh, and it's one of those cases where XRD, XRD is able to handle any kind of mineral. Um, whereas some of the other competing technologies or uh, complementary technologies such as infrared, they can't handle sulfides because sulfides are dark okay. and the infrared is absorbed by it. Right. So if I know if it's an oxide or a sulfide, I know which stream to process it in. Another example would be when you start getting to uh, float plants. Okay. Okay. This is a gra these are gravity separations of the ore. You want the, the dense stuff to fall to the bottom and the light stuff to stay on the top. The problem is, you know, what, you know, you don't only have the ore. You have other things in there, such as talc, that will float and carry the sulfides which you want to drop. Sure, sure, sure. So, what is the benefit of the Olympus equipment? The biggest benefit is you get very clean data, very fast, and anybody can prep the data. Normal X-ray diffraction requires a semi-pressed pellet. Okay. So you grind it up, you put it in a micronizer to get good data, and then you, you kind of tap it down to make a, uh, to make a pellet. But if you tap it down too hard, it, uh, cha it changes the quantification. If you don't have a completely smooth surface, it changes things. There's a lot of art and skill required normally to make X-ray diffraction samples. The big advantage we have is all you have to, the hardest part of ours is trying to figure out what you want to measure. Once you figure out what you want to measure, you take, a, you take less than a gram of sample, grind it to less than 150 microns, which, which for the industry is a relatively coarse grind, right. and just take a spatula and load it in. Very neat. There, there, there's no way to do it wrong. How long of uh, a test time does this take? Well, it depends what you're trying to measure. Okay. Um, if you want simple things like hematite-magnetite ratios in ore, in iron ore, you would be talking about two to three minutes. It okay. stabilizes. If you're trying to pick up a couple of percent of talc in a nickel ore, for example, uh, you would be talking about 15 minutes. And uh, this is something that you could do on location. Absolutely. The nice thing about our equipment is that it, it's small and runs at low power. Uh, this means you can set it up anywhere, and you can set it up quickly. The low power means you don't need any special, you don't need any special electrical connections, sure. and you don't need anything special to cool the system. Most X-ray diffraction systems that give decent data require uh, require liquid co uh, water cooling. Okay. We run at 10 watts, give the same data as a 10 as about a one kilowatt system, and we we're we're all fan cooled. And these are not large systems; they're very right. So yeah, it's the water cooled now. <laughs> yeah, it's the only moving part on that system essentially is the fan. Yeah. 
Very good. Phil, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Ian, for having me. And uh, thank you. If you have any other questions, please visit our social media channels. If not, uh, find out more about our XRF and XRD technologies at olympus-ims.com. Thank you.